Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Two Trees TS3 laser engraver. This engraver came with a metal case and the appearance looks really nice. It also came with a 3.5 inch touchscreen, which allows you to work offline without connecting the machine to the computer with a USB cable. You can just save the G-code files in the micro SD card and use it like a 3D printer. There are two options to handle the smoke generated during engraving. The first option is a filter, and the second option is using a duct to exhaust the smoke. I will test out both options. You can also choose from a 5W or 10W laser module. The machine I received came with a 10W module. This machine will be ready to ship in April, as the manufacturer is working on some improvements. You may see some differences in the final product. I would like to thank Two Trees for sending me this machine for early review. Let's get started. We have the machine, a fan duct and the adapter, a power supply, safety goggles, and some tools. Since the machine is pre-assembled, we can just turn it on and start using it. First, go to the control menu. Click on the H home icon, which means hardware home. It will move to the corner until both X and Y axis limit switches are triggered. Then, I will jog the machine to the center of the material and set the distance of the laser module. It came with a 46mm tall cylinder and two 1mm and one 2mm spacers. For engraving, we will stack all of them to make a 50mm cylinder to set the distance. Turn the thumb screw on the laser module and move it up and down. Okay, I will jog the machine to the starting position of the working material and then press the position icon to save the current position. I can always use this home button to return to the same position. I will run a simple test on this leftover plywood. Go to the engraved menu, and there are three files inside the micro SD card. These two G-code files are used to set the step value for the Y-axis and the rotary roller, which we will also test out later. We only have one test file, and let's click on it. Save the current position again as the job origin. Press the frame button to draw the working area of this job. Okay, it seems it's just a small job, and it's within the material. I can close the lid and start the job. It starts engraving. As we are currently using the carbon filter, I can see some smoke coming out from the machine, as the fans are currently set up as intake fans that push in air and create positive air pressure. The smoke has no way out except from the filter and the gap of the lid. I'm not sure how much smoke is filtered out and how much has leaked from the gap, but let it finish and we will see. The sample G-code includes some text, a vector graphic of this machine, and a QR code. Okay, the job is done. When I open the lid, there is not much smoke, but it still doesn't smell that good. I think having this filter is better than having no filter, but it didn't make a huge difference. The engraving is looking good. I will try to use my phone to scan this QR code, and it redirects me to Two Trees' website. Before I do more tests, I will remove the filter and use the duct to exhaust the smoke. And we will open up the cover at the back. Remove the filter holder. Flip the fan from pushing air inside to exhaust air outside. Remove two screws of each fan and flip the direction and then put them back. Then, loosen the four screws on the back cover to remove the plate and replace it with a ducting adapter. If you have a filter, you can put it back, but I don't think I need it if I use the fans as exhaust fans, so I will just leave it, put the cover back, tighten all the screws, and I will turn it on to see if the fans are working. As you can see, they are exhausting air from the machine, so I can install the ducting and secure it with a duct clamp. Okay, I will try to pull it to see if I have tightened it well. I will connect this ducting to another 120 millimeter ducting, that I normally use with my laser tent. I 3D printed an adapter to connect them together. I also put the link of the 3D model under the description. Next, I will do some tests on these 300 by 200 millimeter, three millimeter thick plywood, which should fit perfectly with this machine. A pack of 20 cost around $32. I will use Lightburn to create a file with different operations and cut the wood at different speeds, starting from 500 millimeters per minute down to 100, with 100% power to see what the optimal speed is to use on this material. 
Let's do a preview and it looks good. Instead of sending the job to the machine, I will save the G-code to the microSD card and use the offline controller. Just save the file extension as .nc. Go back to the machine, choose engrave, we have the file here. Since I've already jogged the machine to the starting position, press position to save it again, and press the frame button to do a preview, and then start the job. It seems all of them can cut through completely, except the one cutting with 500 feed rate. The square can also be removed with a little snap. As you can see, the edges are quite clean. I think the optimal settings would be somewhere between 300 to 400 with 100% power depending on the shape you need to cut. Next, I will engrave an Eiffel Tower photo and cut it out. I will use 6,000 millimeters per minute and 50% power for photo engraving. For cutting, as we tested on this material that we can use as fast as 400 millimeters per minute to get a clean cutout on a small square, we can cut out this larger square at the same feed rate. Let's go to the machine, load this Eiffel Tower G-code, and as I already jogged the machine to the starting tower left starting position, save this again and we can do a preview. The offline controller shows the warning message, the file is larger than one megabyte. Let me explain what this is before we continue. Normally, the machine needs to load the whole G-code file, read line by line to calculate the working area of the job to show the frame. For a large photo engraving job, the file may contain more than a million lines of G-code. If you use the free laser gerbil, when I load a picture, set the speed, power, and size, and then save it as G-code, the program won't put the boundary at the starting G-code, so the machine has to read every line to calculate the working area. For example, the file is almost 1 million lines and the size is around 10 megabytes. The machine needs around 4 minutes to completely load the file. But for Lightburn, it won't be a problem as it put the bounds comment at the beginning of the file, so the machine doesn't need to load the whole file to show the frame. So, if you don't have Lightburn and prefer to use the free laser gerbil, you can also add the size of the job at the beginning manually. For example, this picture is 120 by 90 millimeters, so I can set it to start from X0, Y0 to X120, Y90. If the picture is smaller, you can set it to let's say 100 by 80 millimeters. So you don't have to wait to load the G-code file, no matter how large the file size is, and the frame will start right away. Okay, it seems the working area is fine, and we can start the job. The Eiffel Tower is beautiful. The laser engraver works really well on engraving high contrast photos. I will also cut out a photo stand using the same 400 millimeters per minute and 100% power. This stand cuts out really clean. This is one of the nicest stands I have cut so far. I think the 10 watt laser module and the honeycomb bed really is doing a great job so far. Let's do some more cutting. The next job I want to cut is a pencil holder. I set it to fit exactly on a 300 by 200 plywood. For the feed rate, even though I'm working on the same type of material, I will set it to 300 millimeters per minute instead of 400. Generally, this tiny pattern is more difficult to cut than a large square. Let's do a preview and then draw the frame on the machine and start the job. The pencil holder is cut pretty nice. These small cutouts and all the edges are cut very clean. Let's try to cut some thicker wood and see how it does. All squares using 300 millimeters per minute or slower can cut through completely. These two with 350 and 400 feed rate need a little bit of force to remove from the board. I think the optimal settings are around 250 to 300. 
Next, I would try to cut a quarter inch solid wood board, which is around 6.35 millimeters, starting from 400 millimeters per minute down to 75. All squares using 150 millimeters per minute or slower can cut through completely. The one with 200 millimeters per minute can be removed with a little snap, but we cannot cut through this quarter inch solid wood if the speed is set to 250 millimeters per minute or faster. I will push it to its limit to cut a half inch solid wood, which is about 12.75 millimeters. I will try with the slowest speed, 75 millimeters per minute, and do one pass and see if it can cut through. As you can see, it's cutting down to around 10 to 11 millimeters. At some point, it almost cut through. But I can also break it in two with a little snap. I will cut it again, but this time using two passes. One good thing about this offline controller is you can set the number of passes you want to run, so you don't have to change the G-code manually. Let's try two passes. It cut through completely. I think it should be able to cut with 100 millimeters per minute with two passes. Let's run the same job again. The same two passes, but this time, I will pause the job right away when it starts. Adjust the speed to 35% faster, which is around 100 millimeters per minute, and then continue the job. As expected, it can cut through completely with 100 millimeters per minute and two passes. Since this machine also came with a rotary roller, I will remove the honeycomb bed and try to engrave a water bottle. Before I start the job, there are two things to do. First, at the back of the machine, there is a switch to control which y-axis we want to use as the y-axis, and the rotary roller is controlled by two different stepper motors. We need to flip the switch to two when we use the roller. Also, the steps of the y-axis and the roller are different. We also need to run a g-code file to set the step value. After a few seconds when the g-code file is sent, it's done. I will engrave a logo on a bottle, and since the bottle is put on the roller, I will rotate the logo 270 degrees and use 3000 millimeters per minute and 50% power. Do a preview and it looks fine. We can save the file to the SD card and start the job. For this metal bottle, it actually engraved on the surface to remove the coating. Let it finish and see how it looks. The logo looks fine. Since this is the only metal bottle I can find, the condition of the bottle is not good, as my brother used it before and dropped it hundreds of times, but the logo still looks pretty nice. I will engrave another one on the bottom cover of the machine and see how it does on different types of material. This bottom cover is sheet metal with paint. It just burns out the paint to engrave the logo. This time it seems even nicer than the old water bottle. I will put another line of text at the bottom. I am quite happy with this result. Finally. I will test out the Wi-Fi feature. We need to go to Tools, click on the Wi-Fi button, connect to our existing Wi-Fi like what you do on a cell phone. After a while, it will show the IP address on the screen. Then search for MKS Laser from the App Store and download it. Connect to the machine by choosing Search Laser. Once the machine is connected, you can jog the machine like what you did on the touchscreen, draw something to engrave, load a picture from your phone, or select some sample clips from the app. I will just try to engrave this sheep. You can set the feed rate, laser power, draw the preview frame, and start engraving. Of course, the result is not as good as Lightburn or Laser Gerbil, as the computer software allows you to have better control of the engraving job. Personally, I don't think it can replace the computer software, but it is just nice to have it to do something really simple. Besides that, when you open the IP address with your browser, you can access an ESP web interface to do some basic control, like jogging, changing some settings, and accessing the micro SD card to start a job or upload a file. But I have some problems with the interface. It sometimes keeps loading and stops responding. I'm not sure if the issue is with the Wi-Fi or if there are other reasons, but for a laser engraver, you still need to walk to the machine to set up the material, adjust the laser module distance, so I would rather stick to the touch screen. All the tests I did in this video are using the touch screen on the machine and never connected the USB cable to the computer. It can work offline completely without any issues. In conclusion, I am quite happy with this machine. Let's talk about the pros. The enclosure is high quality, it's heavy and rigid. 
With a fan ducting and two power exhaust fans, I can't see any smoke coming out of the machine, and it exhausts the smoke very well. The offline controller and the touchscreen is working flawlessly. I can use it offline completely, and I have never connected it to the computer so far. Just like how you work with a 3D printer. The 10 watt laser module cuts really well. It cuts through a half inch thick solid wood with two passes at 100 millimeters per minute. The result of cutting through other thinner materials like 3 millimeter plywood is quite impressive. The honeycomb bed has also contributed a lot for the good cutting results. The lid of the enclosure also works as an eye protector. I didn't wear safety goggles most of the time, which is highly not recommended, but I looked through the screen of the phone while recording the clips and didn't look directly into the laser dot, so I think it should be fine. It also came with a roller that can be switched easily without having to reconnect cables, and the result is pretty good. Another safety feature is the frame detector. It will stop the machine when it detects fire, but like many other frame detectors, it will also be triggered by direct sunlight. Let's talk about the cons. The biggest limitation on this machine is the size. Instead of the regular 400 by 400 millimeter desktop engraver, it can only work with 300 by 200 millimeters or smaller materials. The roller is 200 millimeters long, so it also won't fit with any object longer than 200 millimeters. The filter can reduce some smoke, but it's not as good as the exhaust fans and ducting. Generally, the Wi-Fi feature is not that important for a laser engraver, as you still need to walk to the machine to set up materials before you start the job. But the Wi-Fi feature on this machine needs some improvement. The machine can't save your network SSID and password. You need to reconnect it manually every time when you turn it back on. The Wi-Fi app is working, and it can do some simple engraving, but the web interface doesn't work smoothly. Hopefully, a firmware update can fix this issue. Besides that, the build quality of this machine is good. I like the metal enclosure, honeycomb bed, offline controller, touchscreen, and the rotary roller. They worked well together. I am happy with both engraving and cutting results. It's a solid machine, and I think it deserves a dedicated place on this rack. I would probably do more engraving with it. This machine is currently available for pre-order and will be shipped in April. If you're interested, you can check out the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.